This video is brought to you by MyMovieHall.com. Watch unlimited movies, documentaries, and TV shows at MyMovieHall.com. Start watching right now at MyMovieHall.com. MyMovieHall.com, your entertainment center. Dave Conway won't let him get away. Well, it was a Saturday morning, and I was scheduled to come to work at 10 a.m., and I had actually come out two hours prior to that. I was on vacation all week that week. I wasn't supposed to be coming in. 10 4 and your current 1020. The call came across the radio that an officer was taking fire. Affirmative. Rosalie County officer is down. My first instinct was there, how can I get there as quick as I can? So I started heading that way as fast as I could go. Oh, no mark of 24, 120 miles an hour. I heard the 911 dispatch center talking about that the person that was doing the shooting was the gentleman by the name of George Davis who they had been looking for. The 911 center advised us Davis was heading towards Missoula. When I got to about halfway there, I saw the car. It was a tan sedan, a brown sedan. Come across the center lane and get into my lane, facing me head on. It was apparent right from the onset who it was. Hey, headed northbound from Trader Brothers. I'm in pursuit. Light was on. Well, I saw a brown sedan coming towards me. I started to slow down, and I'm thinking, is this him? Is this him? At that time, I seen Deputy Conway racing up behind him at a high rate of speed, and I fell in behind Deputy Conway, and we began chasing Davis. So now all three of us are traveling northbound on U.S. Highway 93. Hey, there, there, northbound, light traffic, uh, 110 miles an hour. He had a fast car, and he was actually pulling away from us. Oh, you don't have the power. I'm just not having the power. This guy was out distancing. Jason asked to pass. You want me to switch with you? All right, we get a straight stretch. So I yielded and he went around. After I passed Conway, I reached some pretty good speeds to catch up to him. I probably wouldn't have done it on a, any other typical pursuit, but this wasn't typical. He just shot a cop and he wasn't going to get away. And finally, this guy slammed on the brakes. This caused us the first initial collision. I remembered looking at his muzzle blast and thinking, I'm dead. I came around the curve, I was probably half a mile or so behind Jason when this wreck happened. I ducked down behind my trunk, and every time I popped my head up a little bit, he would fire another round. And I just wanted to kill him. I wasn't gonna let him kill me before I killed him. I left my cover and fired two good shots at him. I had a pretty good aim on him. Unfortunately, I did not hit him. I pulled right up into the middle of it, trying to use Jason's car as best I could for cover. Davis retreated. This time, Davis is getting into his car and trying to drive away. I just couldn't fathom that he was driving away. We'd just been in a, what I saw was a pretty significant collision. So he continued to drive on. Jason's car was obviously out of commission. We ran back and jumped in my car. We have a report of shots fired that area. Hey, we're multiple shots fired. Suspect is now moving again westbound. Charlie 12 from 19. Sorry, copy westbound again. We were still in speeds far in excess of 100 miles an hour. Units are covered westbound from mile marker 9, westbound towards Idaho. We came around the corner about a half a mile from the state line. Does Idaho have anyone in the area? Idaho's got several headed that way. I'm trying to get their current location. I see an Idaho state police officer with stop sticks across the road. I can see the spikes laying across the road. They're coming! Davis went over those, and his car went out of control and then slid sideways in the road. I remember seeing his gun pointing straight at us again. I could see the, the shots coming right at me. I leaned out my passenger window and was able to fire one more round at him. It was all happening in slow motion in my mind, so I just gassed my car as hard as I could. In the process, 
paralysis. I broke my leg and I had a bunch of glass shards in my eye and I was kind of taken out of the fight at that point. I jumped out of the car. As I'm getting out of the car, I'm drawing my handgun. And as soon as my front sight settled on his left eye, both of his hands were up. At that point, I made the decision that the, the fight was done. Eventually, we cuffed him. We just had him stick his hands out the window because his passenger side window was broken out. We cuffed him in the front and pulled him out of the car. It was my job to, to provide first aid to him. That was hard to do. That was one of the more difficult things I've ever had to do, is to go from wanting to kill him so bad that I was willing to run my car into him to provide him first aid for him. But that's what uh, they paid me to do. It was a happiness that, number one, I had survived, and number two, that this dirt ball was in handcuffs. I knew he was never going to hurt anyone again. Davis received 11 life sentences for his crimes, one of the longest prison terms in Montana state history. Up next, a Miami drug sting turns into a deadly struggle for survival. We were in a situation where at any moment they were going to kill us. And later, an Idaho highway becomes a war zone. I can't believe this guy's coming at me with a knife now. I hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by MyMovieHall.com. Watch unlimited movies, documentaries, and TV shows at MyMovieHall.com. Start right now at MyMovieHall.com. MyMovieHall.com, your entertainment center.